How Expert! Top 10 Wine Making Tips How Expert publishes quick how-to guides on all topics from A to Z by everyday experts. Visit howexpert.com to learn more. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more How Expert Top 10 videos in the future. Moving on, let's talk about the How Expert Top 10 Wine Making Tips. Number 10. Research this includes tasting. Make sure you know what type of wine or varietal you want to make. This would include what types of grapes are available to you in your area. Most grapes are available around the world, regardless of where you live. In fact, some regions or countries like Chile and South Africa deliver fresh grapes to North America. But this requires research into knowing what you like and in what condition they will arrive. Number 9. Buy the best grapes for your budget. Think of this analogy. You have a frozen pizza, and you take it out of the freezer and you're ready to cook it. You may add extra cheese, spices, olive oil, or some vegetables and meat for some extra toppings just to juice up the frozen pizza. It comes out of the oven, and it tastes great for a frozen pizza, but it's still a frozen pizza. Wine is similar. You have to start with the best ingredients. You can't doctor up a subpar grape. Whether it's dried out, too juicy, not enough sugar, you'll never be able to fix it and turn it into good wine. Find the best grapes available to you. Number eight, choose grapes with the right bricks level. Bricks is sugar content. Simply put, not enough sugar in the grapes will yield a weak, watery wine too much sugar, and the wine will turn out too hot or too high in alcohol. Other problems can arise with high bricks too, such as yeast not being able to survive in a high alcohol environment. Most growers harvest grapes at 22 to 26 percent bricks or fermentable sugar. However, it's up to the winemaker to test the grapes to make sure. Number 7. Invest in Equipment you need to have good equipment and products to help you along the way. Most of this will last you years to come, and it certainly will help you produce some fine wine. As mentioned in the last tip, to test your bricks, you can bring a refractometer to the market or vineyard to test the grapes for sugar content. It's a simple tool and can be used throughout the winemaking process. A good crusher and press, along with containers, both open top and some airtight, should be on the list as well. Don't be afraid to invest in the right products. Most can last a lifetime. Number six, join a group. There are plenty of resources to help you in this day and age, along with tips, advice, and wine emergencies. Join a Facebook group for winemakers or find a winemakers forum. There are plenty of experienced people willing to give free and important advice. Along the way, while we're in the process of making wine, we can hit several obstacles. Stuck fermentation, cloudy wines, high alcohol, or high acid. These problems can be solved, and there are techniques to save or preserve your product. Don't be overwhelmed by advice or tips. And remember that while winemaking is a science, it's also an art. So there are many different ways to get to the final result. Number five, pressing. Hopefully, you have a working press. Don't be too alarmed by how it looks or how old it might be. Some great winemakers are using presses that their grandfathers gave to them that might be over 100 years old. Just be sure you know how to use it. Pressing, squeezing, or extracting the wine from the skins, or the must, is an important step in making wine. A good tip here is to make sure that you get as much of the free flow as possible, that is, the juice that just drips down without pressing. This can yield some of the best, most robust, fruity style wine. Most of Opus One is free flow wine only. Of course, most of us don't have the luxury of being a large winery, and we want a good yield, so we have to press. When you do, don't press too hard to get every last drop. You'll get a very tannic, even bitter wine. The tannins come from the skins, the stems, and even the seeds. If you press too hard, you'll extract that tannic, woodsy bitterness from those materials. 
Number four, second run wine. Not many winemakers agree with second run wine, but this technique is a great way to almost double your output from the harvest when you're talking about yield. It's a great way to have extra wine and keep the winemaking process going further. When you are finished with your press, keep the material, the skins, the stems, and the seeds. Place this material back into your fermentation vessel, add water and sugar, and start the fermentation process again. You should have enough residual yeast left in the material from the first run. However, if you see that it isn't cooking, add a little more yeast. Then, just pick up the process again. The wine, in the end, won't turn out as good as your initial batch. However, it will give you an extra one-third to one-half more yield. The old Italian winemakers would say this is the wine you give to your friends. Keep the first run for you and your family. Number three, racking. Take the time during the course of aging your wine, whether it's in barrels or tanks, to rack and perhaps rack again. As home winemakers, some of our wines can turn out like heavy pulp orange juice with far too many particles. The clarity of our wine can be very off-putting for the people with whom we might share and us. By racking our wines a few times during the course of the year, we have the ability to clarify our wines. A little sediment is okay, of course, but a cleaner looking wine is most appealing. Number two, bottling. Select a good style of bottle and buy it new. Most new bottles cost about a dollar per bottle. They are clean, new, and free of any bacteria. You got this far, your wine came out great, so when it's time to put it in a bottle, take some pride in what you put it in. I would never recommend a used bottle. No matter how many times you think you sanitize it, it isn't fully clean. You certainly don't want to spoil what you've worked hard on for a year to ruin the wine on the last step. Make sure you fill each bottle up to the neck with about an inch of air from the cork. For red wines, use dark glass always. Number one, storage. You're at the end of a fantastic wine that you have toiled on for months. It's in the bottle. Please, please, please store it in a dark place and a quiet place as vibrations can have an adverse effect on the wine too. It's difficult to control humidity, but too dry and you can have problems with corks and evaporation. As mentioned before in previous tips, invest in a wine refrigerator. Or closets and basements can be an effective place to store your wine. Let your wines rest for a month or two after bottling if possible. If you liked our video, be sure to click like and subscribe for all topics from A to Z in the future. Also, let us know what other topics you want us to do a How Expert Top 10 video in the future in the comments below. Thank you. Have an amazing day and take care. How Expert publishes quick how to guides on all topics from A to Z by everyday experts. Visit howexpert.com to learn more.